everyone and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is James Cork and with me I have Norman Sanso. Hello. Awesome brony reviewer Silverquill. Oh dear. So oh, like a oh, silver coffee. Oh. oh. I had that dream again. <laughs> the one where you were at a convention? Oh, the one where I saw the podcast show. There are all these people from other parts of the world, and it was scary. And- oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry, Silver, you're still dreaming. No! It's a dream within a dream. It's an eater. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And, of course, fantastic Ronnie Reactor, Kikaskin. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to be here. And in today's uh, review, we are going to be talking about episode four of season five of My Little Pony French Beast Magic, titled Bloom and Gloom, written by Josh Haber, with storyboard by Jenny, Jen Debro and Nicole Wang. So, well, okay, it's a Cutie Mer Crusader centric episode, uh, which uh, revolves around Apple Bloom of all of the CMCs, who is panicking and getting overly uh, overly stressed out about her not getting her cutie mark. What's going to happen when she gets her cutie mark, and the the consequences and implications of her getting one? So, well, guys, what did you, let's let's do first impressions, and then we move on to discuss the episode at large. I mean, for as long as this podcast podcast can last. So, uh, like always, supporter of the al- inverted alphabetical order. Let's start with you, Silver. What did you think about this episode? Well, it was an enjoyable ride. I I thought to myself, if ever there was an episode to argue against spoilers, uh, it's this one, because it even if you read the um, the synopsis online when it was just announced, a a good twist within this episode gets spoiled for you, and that changes your experience. But by and large, I enjoyed a lot of uh, the quasi world building. And it's always fun to see Princess Luna again, but and that will be a that will be a discussion for later in the podcast, uh, as I've heard folks talking about the Luna they knew was gone. <laughs> so, so, but but by and large, it was fun just to see Apple Bloom reacting to all these fears, and to suddenly move a step behind. Oh, let's get our cutie marks to what kind of life am I going to live now that I have a cutie mark? It's like most kids. Spend so all this time wishing, and they don't think about what will happen after. Yeah, there is no. Uh, th- th- this show hasn't had that moment to stop and think about the consequences of uh, her getting the cutie mark. Um, and what did you what did you think, uh, Norman, of uh, of this episode? I okay. Here's the thing: I've been avoiding episodes all, lo- all all the time, like all this time. So for me, this episode was awesome, and getting to experience the twist was cool but i heard someone said that oh they read the synopsis it was a spoiler over there and then when they move on to another part it's like oh it's like i seen this coming so it's no surprise and as for the episode itself it's pretty cool it's pretty fun to see what would happen if some of the characters that were looking for their cutie mark got their cutie mark and what happens then yeah. and what about you Ken? what do you think of it I absolutely adored this episode. Um, from from Babsy actually getting a cutie mark to the twist in, in in the first sequence, which I quickly figured out, but it was still amazing. To Luna appearing, to finally all three Crus- Crusaders got their dream sequence with Luna. For some reason, that that little tie, it like little knot in a tie at the end, really did it for me. I thought it was great. <laughs> You will say it put a bow on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, that's cool. That's cool. Um, I I have never seen a piece of fiction to be so de- de- deceptive and like uh, tricky as uh, this episode since I last watched a movie called Predestination. Now, Predestination might be one of the most unpredictable movies you can ever ima- you can ever conceive, and I'm not going to go into what it is about. But this episode had me on a constant loop, uh, going, it had me at, at the edge of my seat with surprise after surprise. And I really liked it. Um, I will say this is Josh Haber's finest work for the show. 
I always enjoy his episode, but his episodes, but I think this is the, this is the most solid he has ever produced. So, um, I say let's talk about it and see the things that worked in it and the things that, uh, that didn't work in it. Although I think it's going to be difficult to find any of the latter since there are so many of the former. Okay. So, uh, we start in the Cutie Mercury Crusaders Clubhouse as Apple Bloom has organized the meeting to talk about, uh, Bob Seed, who's just gotten her cutie mark. And she got her cutie mark in, in, it's a pair of scissors. So apparently she's good at cutting. I wonder what kind of cutting though. Hmm. You gotta catch her, man. <laughs> she lives in the main streets of Manhattan. I think she's uh, good with a knife. <laughs> yeah. I got something to say here. I mean, I'm looking at a pair of scissors now and it's wrong. It's the, the way they look is wrong. Uh, what do you mean? Like, look at the blade. Look at the handle. It's totally wrong. The handle is shaped like an apple. The shape, the handle is shaped like, shaped like an apple. What are you talking about? No, no, no. It, take, take a pair of scissors and open them slightly. Look at how the handle is and look at how the blade is. He means the grip isn't separating. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And yet it's stylized like an apple. So that is her actual cutie mark. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the only off thing for me because, like, scissors don't work that way. Uh, but that's just me. Well, remember, stylized. Mm. Maybe if they, if they were close, they wouldn't look like uh, like scissors and more like, uh, I don't know. A blade. <laughs> a blade. Mm. Although look, looking at it up close, you kind of realize this is the fun thing about the Apple family cutie mark. Look at <laughs> the design flexibility. Mm. You know, you think, oh, you can't blend apples and scissors. That just sounds, oh, look, apple scissors. <laughs> yeah. And they look brilliant i have to say i mean you can even see the little um seeds inside the apple like it's a cut from like the side it's like a like a side cut only available at your local apple store <laughs> although they also kind of look like woogly eyes <laughs> oh, yeah it's like mm. <laughs> although yeah but that, it, it is pretty cool to see that uh that babs finally got her cutie mark no more no more shaming for it so now that Bob's got her cutie mark, they are wondering what's going to happen with the main hat and branch of the cutie mark crusaders. And that's what brings them to, uh, to think, wow, can you imagine being hip deep in hair all day? I definitely don't want a cutie mark like that. What happens when you get a cutie mark that you don't like? And it devolves into this rather, I don't know what to say, but it's both funny and also terrifying to think, oh wow, what's going to happen if I get something that that doesn't fit me. That's the problem with getting something like you think that you want to be an artist, but in the end, you you become an accountant. And so arting is just your passion. That's, that's hard. And something like a cutie mark symbolizing what you do, it's even harder. Also, um, nice not to... I don't want to think it's a not to continuity, but do you remember the ending of the French Forever issue number 13? When... Babs is talking about getting different hairstyles mm-hmm. and the way that, that that other pony was styling her hair. You kind of wonder if it's prophetic. Huh. Yeah, I, I I want to I want to think it is because it's like oh that is actually a it's neat how it works in on its own. Uh, because why wouldn't uh, why wouldn't uh, why wouldn't it work like that? So yeah, I think it will be kind of prophetic. But no, it's, it, it is pretty cool. However, Apple Bloom doesn't take it like that, and she starts panicking. And she panics so hard that she keeps going even after me, uh, uh, once it's already nighttime. And when Applejack's tucking her into bed, she is still panicking about it. She's still having like, oh my god, what is gonna happen? What, what if what I get is not something that fits me? What if my friends have stopped talking to me? What if it's not an apple? What if I have to move? Where am I gonna live? Apparently she forgot that Aunt Numble Orange existed. <laughs> yeah, and we don't talk about them. <laughs> but uh, Aunt and Uncle Orange also live away from Apple Acres, so mm-hmm. she might just have to move. She gets an apple, uh, not an, a non-apple. <laughs> gonna have to, gonna have to move to Manhattan. So her new name is gonna be Android Bloom. <laughs> anyway, so. Uh, Applejack tucks her sister into bed, says that you don't have to worry about any of that because a cutie mark is not going to change you. You are going to still be you. And thus, Applebloom goes to bed. And then she wakes up the next morning. She's like, oh, I slept so well, I slept so good. And Applejack is like, whoa, hang on a minute. What is that on your flank? And 
Well, you know, Apple Bloom wakes up with a new cutie mark. Like, look at that. She got her cutie mark. And that was this point. Of, the point of the episode where I was like, both excited and illusionated, but at the same time kind of weirded out because <laughs> what is that cutie mark? <laughs> I was so confused. So is Applejack. Looks like a fum- fum- fumigation kit or something like that. But we quickly, we quickly get our answer with a, a pest, uh, pest control pony appearing saying, aha, you are, you're like me. I'm gonna have to retire and you're gonna take care of the business. <laughs> Dude, have you ever heard of Twitter mites? <laughs> Twitter mites. <laughs> Twitter are those, mites. Are those those pesky fans that keep on twittering those people in the show about their complaints about the show? No? Hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, I think they would be perfect uh, to see in the weather factory cre- helping to create lightning. I think that would be great if that's why they're collecting them. Just uh, because, I mean, they have thunderstorms, mm, like true. in the uh, sleep power episode. Mm, true, true. Although, uh, I, I got to ask, well, the guy's saying, have you ever heard tw- Twitter bites? I'm saying, have you ever heard of child labor laws? Hi, <laughs> <laughs> uh, buddy. Hi, hi, hi. Wow, 10 minutes of training and she's ready to take over the business? Well, <laughs> so that's your business model, huh? That's the way that Walmart works, actually. <laughs> or, or, or if you want to get it worse, that's how Nike works. Oh, just do it. Oh. <laughs> but, well, apparently Apple Bloom is really good at what she does. Uh, she's doing some Matrix moves there and the, the, the Pest Pony is so happy with his, he's like, oh, okay, good. You're good to go. Bye. And he leaves. And who come? None other than Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. Uh, being uh, their, being the, 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 the pleasant, the usual pleasant ponies, aren't they? Yes. Uh, being so yes. angry and so hateful. He's a yeah. friend. Despite uh, the fact that they are so just unlikable, hateful, vengeful little snot nosed brats. <laughs> No, no. I was quite happy that Silverstone actually spoke for herself for once, rather than just went along with the Amatiara. Although the fact that we know this is a dream just says, "Wow, Apple Bloom really knows these two. <laughs> oh, I was I was slowly leading into it with with the way that we yeah. were reviewing it. <laughs> uh, okay, well, spoilers for all of three seconds. <laughs> Spoiler alert! Uh, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. But yeah, it's like. No, no, but you're absolutely right. Yeah, let's talk about that because if you think about it, when you see it from the dream perspective, uh, this is the perception that uh, Apple Bloom has of Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon, that they are two heartless, unlikable, horrible bullies. And it's very interesting because I'm pretty sure these two guys have something more to them. We just haven't had the chance to see it. I'm still holding hope that we can see Maybe some of that personality, like you know that that childlike innocence that was present in uh, Princess Violet Sparkle, of uh, I know it's childish more child childish interest, but there was a bit of charm of Silver Spoon and Diamond Tiara kind of like going after the CMCs because they know uh they know someone who's horse famous if you know <laughs> what I mean. Probably in the comics, like in the Friends Forever, featuring Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon, probably. Uh, I kind of gave up. I gave up on those two after Flight to the Finish where, okay, you're, you, it's one thing to bully someone just out of place, but when you actually start to attack them for physical trouble, I'm like, that's it. You are beyond redemption now. Yeah, you're despicable. You are absolutely despicable. I would just but, be like making someone, someone who's disabled. It's just not funny at that point. Uh, so Apple Bloom gets, of course, uh, legitimately cheesed out, and she runs away, uh, throwing one of the containers with the Twitter mites in it that consequently cracks. And she runs away so far that she apparently steps into the Everfree Forest, where a shadowy figure tells her that she can get rid of her cutie mark if she doesn't like it. So she does so, and when she comes back to Ponyville, finds out that the Twitter mites have multiplied and spanned it all over. And they are attacking, destroying buildings, attacking other ponies and all that. Mm-hmm. And when Apple Bloom tries to use the equipment, it doesn't work because she lost her cutie mark. She cannot use the, 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 the pest control equipment anymore. So she tries to run to Sweet Apple Lakers to save it, only for it to be destroyed for the upteenth time. 
The insurance company has to hate the Apple family, don't they? <laughs> Mm. But just um, really badly. But just going back to the um, the forest and Apple Bloom running away and the Twitter mites. I think it, what fascinates me not just about the episode but about actual dreams is something that's come out of the world that can destroy Equestria. No one's heard of before. She runs for about five seconds and ends up in the um, the Everfree Forest. And it's the same as in actual dreams. Is your brain because your brain is generating it? It just it makes sense in the dream like you, you wouldn't know you're in the dream because it makes sense to you whereas you it wouldn't be like that would it you'd have heard of twitter mites you'd have got to the other forest after five minutes of running and i just think it's fascinating that both the actual brain and in the episode it, your brain just reacts to that as if it makes no that makes sense <laughs> when logically it probably wouldn't hmm. also uh, there be a piece in this episode very slow, very free, briefly, but she does. Yeah, and if you wow. look at her eyes, they're not derped. Oh no! Oh, Who no. cares? I do. Well, that, now it's now we know it's a dream for sure. Not spoilers. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's like us. And then Apple Bloom gives up. She drops the, the, the what what she's trying to use to cut the Twitter mics, and as she's getting sucked by them, she wakes up. Oh, it was Valley a dream. Parents. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was a dream, and that that was the point where I was like, "Oh, oh, it was a dream." Oh, okay, and so she she wakes up, and the same sequence repeats, and this is where it's getting interesting. This is what I thought the, that Apple Bloom, uh, uh, Apple Bloom got under some sort of spell or something, and someone was playing tricks on her for one reason or another, and that's why like they, they caught her in la, in like um. A loop like uh, Groundhog Day. You guys remember Groundhog Day, right? Oh yeah, I never saw it. It's um, it's a brilliant comedy with Bill Murray where he gets trapped in a time loop constantly, where he keeps going reliving the same day over and over again. And I thought that this is what was happening to Apple Bloom because she wakes up, she goes downstairs, and she finds out she has another cutie mark. So quickly goes to tell her friends. She disappears like a Batman. <laughs> Only to you do your chores. Cho- <laughs> <laughs> she disappears. She's bad man. And she goes to meet with the with the rest of the CMCs into the clubhouse, and they are like, "Oh well, you already have your cutie mark. Why you, are you even in here? Oh, we, you know what? We shouldn't even even be friends anymore." She, what? And then she's like left outside of the house again and back into the woods. This is the other part. It's like, oh, you lost your friends. Like, you know what? They can make them come back by removing your cutie mark again. So, I don't know. What would you guys make out of this sequence? That uh, the constant back and forth going uh, going into the woods and and coming back from a, a horrible realization. Kind of reminded me of the film with Tom Cruise. I can't remember the name of it now. Where he's got to save the future. Uh, during the war with aliens, Edge of, Edge of Tomorrow, really? Is that the one? Yes, he's got like the like the mecha suit and things. But um, I would great, I would pay great money to see um, <laughs> Bloom with a mech suit. Well, yes, that actually, I'd pay great money for that. But what I was going to say was, um, I would pay great money to see a film or an extended episode where the actual villain can sort like not just Discord, but someone like Discord can make time repeat so that it's always in his favour and somehow the main six or someone else has got to to fix the problem. I think that would, that would pay great money to see that as a film. Well, I just I just paid money to see Tom Cruise die a lot. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's, yeah. What? What? Edge of Tomorrow, man. You will love it. It, it, it goes, it goes wily coyote at some point. <laughs> Mm, I don't know. I mean, when I look at the sequence, like, okay, the first sequence where Apple Bloom was fighting the Twitter mites and she woke up, okay, that could be a possible Groundhog Day episode because um, I've, I'm not surprised. Did uh, Amy Larson work on this one? No, no, he didn't. This is all Josh Haber. Mm, because in a Pet Shop episode, Amy Larson wrote that episode. It's the same thing, like it repeats day after day and the same thing. So it was a Groundhog Day episode for Pet Shops. And in this one, it felt like it, but certain things didn't seem right. Certain things didn't repeat the same. For example, was breakfast 
where uh, I put well, it was the, making pancakes. The, the breakfast table, yeah. I was mm-hmm. going to go over that later. Okay. Um, but no, I just realized um, that this is kind of like deceiving in that case because the second cutie mark that she gets is in potion making. And that is a night need not to continuity without making it like shoving it in your face. Mm. Uh, she's like, aha, looks like the lessons with Twilight Sparkle have finally paid off. Oh, Princess Twilight, she Pri- says. Every, everybody's seeing Princess Twilight now. <laughs> and, she, <laughs> and she's not denying it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And except for her best friends, they call her Twilight. Yeah. I, I, that's why I thought maybe it was just that one sequence where it was a dream, and I got re-excited when I saw she had a potion making apples going, oh, that was a dream, maybe, oh no, this one's real, that one makes sense, that one makes sense, that one makes sense, yay! Oh, okay. <laughs> then we go on to the next one. Uh, that, where... Yeah, right after she's trapped in the uh, stranded uh, uh, Kid Crusader clubhouse, and the rooster wakes her up, this is the point where I find, where I was catching up with the structure of the episode, which it was um. She she's trapped in a dream within a dream within a dream. She just keeps going, dream after dream, waking up from one to the other, and it it keeps getting worse and worse. First is a dream about her not being able to save the, the the town. Then it's a dream about her friends abandoning her. The third one might be the worst of them all. The, the, yeah, yeah, because there is nothing worse than having your family not just disrespect you but disown you. Because, yeah, it, the way that Applejack moves, but she's like, she walks back as, as she sees the cutie mark. I'm also, I just noticed, did you see all the editing errors that there are in this sequence? Yeah, the kitchen's different. The, the, the kitchen is, the, the, the kitchen sh- change, changes shapes, shapes. There is like, a, table. yeah, she appears on the table. Applejack's hat appears and reappears. Mm. Yep. But would you call uh, it animation uh, error? Because this is a dream. No, no, it's in, no, but that is, it's intentional. That's the thing. Oh, the other re- detail. Did you guys notice the rooster on the rooftop that lays an egg and the uh-huh. egg doesn't fall either side? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, inse- speaking of which, speaking of inception, because it's like the tabletop, uh, all we're missing in this episode is a, <laughs> <laughs> and we've got ourselves a reenactment right here. <laughs> but, um, on this sequence with the, with the, um, I realized it was a, it was another dream at this point, but what really made me happy about this was when Big Mac talks, and then I go from happy to really confused. Why is Big Mac speaking out of Applejack and <laughs> Granny Smith? I'm so confused now. It's like watching the 1980s Ninja Turtles. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Or a, or a season one episode. <laughs> oh god. Then you remember that one episode where Apple Bloom starts speaking out of Sweetie Bell? That was Which weird. One? It was uh, the the um, Stairmaster episode. No, I know that, but they do it in several episodes. <laughs> I don't so. remember that scene, but oh, when um, no, I, it was actually Scootaloo speaking out of Sweetie Belle. <laughs> when when Sweetie Belle goes, okay, so what kind of crusader do we crusading do we do next? That's Scootaloo's voice coming out of Sweetie Belle. Wow, I need to rewatch that. <laughs> yeah, it's in quite a few episodes at the beginning. Or or just watch everything wrong with. I'm sure somebody will. Oh god, <laughs> that that is a charmingly uh, passive aggressive video series. <laughs> I think it's fantastic. I'm so happy when I see those. But yeah, it's like it is. It is rather heartbreaking to see how um, uh, Apple Bloom's family just completely disowns her, removes her face from all the photos, give her a uh, like t- kick her out of the door. She falls. Did you guys notice how there are a lot of dream, uh, very classic dream tropes happening in this, uh, in this episode? Like the, the dream of falling, the dream of, uh, being chased by something you don't see, the dream of being ridiculed in public. Yep. It's like, there are, there are all of those. I thought they were, and it, they, they are woven really well. This is actually a very clever way of treating dreams, in my opinion, I guess. I, 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 I think. Mm-hmm. I thought it was great. Um, moving on to the, when she woke up next, it really threw me for a loop. The because there's two things I've heard about in dreams that can help you have lucid dreams, and that's it. if you aren't sure if you're dreaming, try to read because if you can't read, you're dreaming, or look at your reflection in something because you can't see your reflection. That's what I've heard, and I kind of believe this because I've tried it before, and it, it, I, I don't know if it works or not, but. I saw I saw this bit where she looks in the mirror and I thought, oh, maybe she's not. Maybe, maybe Discord's trying to not mess with her but help her with something. 
because the voice in their forest sounds despic- like to me it sounds a lot like her, her Pinkie Pie impression. Uh, when she's not a Pinkie Pie, when she's a, when he's a butterfly for Fluttershy back in when he first appeared. Oh, the uh, yeah, the the vocal distortion. Yeah, I, I was thinking, oh, maybe, maybe this is, she's not sleeping. Maybe she is under a spell. So I got rethrown for a loop, really. And speaking of Pinkie Pie, that <laughs> chicken pie with balloons. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, one one flew over a cuckoo's nest. <laughs> uh-huh. Also, who else noticed the point where she's stepping out of the door and she has a door cutie mark? So, uh, really? Yes. Check it out. She has a I'm, door cutie mark. Oh. I'm sure you adore that scene. Oh, <laughs> Oh God! Uh, I won't say I I I, uh, I won't say I don't. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I noticed that. I noticed that. <laughs> but uh, also, oh my God! I was wondering where your voice box, wa- where your sound box was, and if you actually had an inception noise in your sound box. No, but I can give you a bum bum <laughs> bum 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 bum. Keep going. But bum, the, bum. The, speaking of Inception, it is hilarious that at one point she does get a winking apple bloom cutie mark. <laughs> Ain't that a comic? Her cutie mark is herself. <sighs> that is hilarious. A narcissistic one, one. cutie mark. <laughs> One wonders why Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon didn't get that cutie mark. <laughs> well, it is fun. It, it 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 is fun. All these uh, all these many different gags that they came up with, and well, it, it, okay. Up until this point, the episode had been throwing me for a loop, and I wasn't expecting the the conclusion that it was going to have. This is why he said it was a very um, uh, deceiving episode, because it does feel like somebody has her under under a spell that they are toying with her. And uh, it's funny because who else is uh, who else is doing this uh, to Apple Bloom Band but herself? And the reveal that they have of the, the, that they make of this is so clever. Okay, show of hands, who here went complete uh, fun girl in squeen and <laughs> <laughs> when when Luna showed up? I did. Uh, I. I... Like I say, I knew that this was a dream episode, so it's like, Luna should probably be there. It's like, yeah, there she is. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> I might have done an impersonation of her entrance with my arms when I <laughs> re- did my reaction. <laughs> Look, it's Luna, she does the cool thing with the wings. And... <sighs> did I really just do that on camera? I did. <laughs> uh-huh. But, yeah, I mean, the the way that, that they present her... That... That was so cool. It's like her wings are covering her, then she spreads them out, and and when she moves, the camera moves with her. And I'm like, this is so cool. And uh, wh- the way she put it is like, oh, you cannot run from your own shadow. And then Luna moves the moon because, of course, why why wouldn't she? And it is revealed that the shadow thing was Apple Bloom all along. That she was doing this to herself, and. I remember that in the For Whom the Suitable Toils uh, episode when uh, Suitable starts going on to dark, that dark future that uh, it's apparently going to happen to Rarity if she doesn't fix the, the headdress and puts everything in order. I know some people were wondering if Luna was putting Suitable through all that stress. I think this episode confirms that when you get trapped in a nightmare, uh, it is not because of Luna's uh, uh, will. You are just trapped in a nightmare because you are in control of the wheel. You are the one doing this to yourself. You are overwarming. Hmm. You are panicking. Subconsciously, you're doing this to yourself. Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> Stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. <laughs> uh, but I, I did like that because it did put Luna in a rather more positive light. Uh, because many many thought, oh, wow, poor poor Sweetable. She's putting her through a lot of pressure and a lot of stress. This is actually being very mean. No, she was doing it to herself all along. The same way that Apple Lung was over worrying and jumping from nightmare to nightmare. Uh, so Luna gets her out of there and throws her into the that hallway of doors from the Matrix Reloaded <laughs> to explain her that it doesn't matter what you get because it will not change you who you are or what other ponies think of you. The cutie pox says otherwise. <laughs> She's enchanted, possessed, cursed. Uh, but Un- 
unclean, unclean, <laughs> unclean, Sean, Sean. Uh, but Abelum is like, I must be the only one who worries over her cutie mark. And Luna is like, well, actually. And it takes her into both Zutibel's and Scutalus' dreams that are... Uh, Zutibel's dream is actually hilarious, but uh, but Scutalus' dream is terrifying. You guys do know that what this episode really signifies, right? What? what? Fluttershy was right. About? About what? In the Stairmaster, she said, maybe your your true talent will come to you in a dream. Well, here's oh. Sweetie Belle about to sing. Here's Scootaloo about to do stunt work. They know what they're good at. And they were dreaming about it. All bow before the Fluttershy's wisdom. <laughs> oh, oh, hail the Fluttershy. Oh, hail always the finding a way, always finding a way to make your favorite pony look like she's the best. I want to, I want to see you defending her on the next episode that we're going to review. <laughs> there was, you will bow before the infinite wisdom of the Fluttershy. Oh, hail the Fluttershy. Oh, hail the Fluttershy. I will bow. I, I will bow if she's using a whip. Anyway. Oh, uh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh my, dominatrix shy. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, dumb shy. Oh, anyway, uh, no, but it, it is, Pink it is, <laughs> kinky shy. It is, uh, we have completely derailed at this point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, um, it is actually really interesting to see these, uh, these two about to perform their favorite talents. And then, uh, what was the one episode? Oh yeah, then Suitable ends up with a, with, with a, uh, what is the name of that thing? I, got, I don't get the name of it in English. Uh, broom? Sweet yes. bu- yeah, a broom. A, 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 yeah. A mop and bucket? Yeah, a mop and bucket. What was she using to practice her magic on the uh, Twilight Sparkle episode? Princess Twilight, uh, Twilight Time. A broom. A yeah. broom. Oh. <laughs> nice not to continuity right there. I like that. Oh, that's good. I didn't notice that. But by the way, Octav- Octavia and Vinyl Scratch are heartless. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. Uh, they're just professional. Not they, even they a know. one for trying. <laughs> I love how Rarity gives her a one because my sister. <laughs> oh, also, Vinyl Scratch's uh, uh, magic is uh, pink. First mm. time we see her magic, actually. Mm. Oh, yeah. But remember, but this like, is... Here's, here's the... Go oh. ahead. Go ahead, Silver. Go ahead. Actually, I think I'm about to, I was just about to paraphrase what Nora was about to say. This is a dream. Yeah. Can you, can you refute mm-hmm. this? But here's the thing. We're, here we are saying, oh, Sweetie Belle's using that broom she had in Princess Twilight and Scootaloo. That's her scooter. Mm-hmm. You kind of wonder, are, are these dreams based on maybe a little bit of reality that maybe Apple Bloom read somewhere about these, uh, zap insects? Who knows? Um, I'm pretty sure she's smart enough, or maybe she's just making it up because she mentions the Paris Prides before mentioning the Twitter mites. Mm-hmm. So, I just uh, I'd like if some of the what we've seen in this episode was part of the show canon, especially that uh, that pest control pony. Mm-hmm. He was so much fun. Yeah, yeah. You need you need to stop repeating everything I say. What? <laughs> Be glad you're not in an anime, pal. <laughs> oh, oh my god. I want someone to say that in an anime one time. You've got to stop repeating everything I say, but that's what we do. <laughs> that's how we roll. Um, I, I suppose uh, real life could influence some conscience, like the broom, the the two famous, I was going to say famous musicians that are reviewing it in a Simon Cowell kind of way. <laughs> Zero. Wait, give me a second, because I remembered something. Didn't Vinyl... Did some magic in some previous episodes? No, she hasn't. She hasn't. Mm. Not that I can't remember. Yes, she did. She used her magic to start the... Uh, the record player. Yes. Oh, no, you're right. That was in season was, one. And it was blue. Really? Blue? Well, every single magic aura in season one was either blue or very fade pink. It wasn't until season two they were including color for different uh, magic auras. Hmm. I... I thought the magic aura matched their eyes. I thought that was just how it went. Yeah, With the that's... exception of chaining uh, armor. Yeah, chaining armor cadence, right? Oh, let's not start this debate again. Oh, they wear contacts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's not. Let's not. No, but you're right. Let's not start. Let's, going back to the episode that we have at hand, I, I, I like that they also include right there another one of the uh, fears of uh, when you're having a nightmare, the fear of drowning. Mm. Uh, how. How Scudalo is like sinking into that barter. By the way, most horrible way to die ever. 
getting dr drowning in, in, in butter or like... Uh. I don't know. That looks like some tasty pasta right there. I don't want to drown in Bart. That, that looks horrible. Now, drowning in chocolate, that's a whole other story. Oh, yeah. no, yeah, that is completely different. Uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Mm -hmm. but no, I like I like to see this. I, I'm, I'm, I'm all for metaphor in this season. I don't know what's wrong with me, but I like to see this as... Um, look at how each one of the dreams works. Is that they all get affected by their environment in that... Uh, 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 in the in the many nightmares that Apple Bloom has is like her family is uh, shunning her, her friends are shunning her, uh, the entire town is falling apart because of her fault because those uh, uh, the, the uh, Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon were shunning her as well. Uh, uh, Scudalo is like drowning in barter. Uh, Sweetie Belle is uh, is also getting uh, rejected by uh, her sister of all things and. Two of the most talented musicians, according to uh, some people's head cannons. But like, I like to think that the fear that the Cutie Mark Crusaders have is uh, fueled by their environment, by their surroundings, but by what they, they have around them, which is a very legit fear. It's like you are worried about what people may think of you. Of course, you are. Anyone is. So. I like I like to take it like that. It's like that is that is a very neat idea, and uh, I subscribe to it. What what will you guys what will you guys think of that? Makes sense to me. I mean, just it. Uh, Apple Bloom has always struck me as the more insecure of the Crusaders, the one who, I guess, because her family places such an emphasis on belonging, it's one of her. It's something she feels like she has to live up to. I, I don't know why, but for some reason I always picture, like, uh, Pegasi being a free spirit and the unicorns being more intelligent. Well, I say intelligent. Um, emphasis on knowledge and learning and things like that. And I picture the Earth Ponies being, like, st not stubborn, but... Dumb. <laughs> no, <laughs> but... I'm not saying that. I'm sorry, um, I'm sorry. I'm trying to think of a positive way of saying, like, stick to but I don't know the word for that. Stick to itiveness a word? That's that's how to say it is. But I picture them being like um Determined. Oh, determined. Thank you so much. That's the word I'm looking for. Determined in belonging, their jobs, what they believe in, things like that. And I just picture that that determination is sort of backfiring on her in this bit where mm. she she needs to belong, she needs to be accepted. Sort of thing. Now, I would also possibly define it as emotional constipation, but only because I want to use constipation in a sentence. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm weird like that. <laughs> no, that, that, that is true. Yeah, I think everything, every sequence in this episode represents every, uh, well, represents their fears well. Like you guys said, Apple Bloom was the more insecure one about getting her CUNY mark, and it does show here where at first, she was afraid of what if the cutie mark doesn't match match my thing, or that I don't want the cutie mark anymore. What happened if I get a cutie mark and all my friends ran away? Or what happened if I get a cutie mark and the family doesn't like me? It's all in the dream. Everything she said before going to bed was there, and well, in the end, addressed by Luna and everyone else. Well, you do know that you are more likely to dream about something as. Uh as you think about it before you fall asleep. So to me, it does make sense that she dreams on has nightmares about the things that she just mentioned. I think it's interesting that she dreams about like the way she says things like, what if I, what if my cutie mark isn't what I want it to be? What if my career isn't what I want it to be? What if my friends don't like me because of it? What if I make a mistake with my friends? What if my family abandons me? What if I make a relationship choice or something like that? You know, like mother-in-law, family-in-law, things like that. I think it's interesting that the, some people actually have fears like this, but not pony related, like not cutie marks, not a family abandoning me, but things like that. I think it would, uh, it's a good little contrast in my head, at least, which is, I was, as we've established, is a bit messed up. So, <laughs> and when, uh, when Apple Bloom comes back from seeing the dreams of Sweetieville and Scoodaloo, she's like, Sweetieville and Scoodaloo had, had, had dreams as well. And Luna is like, it's been a long night for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> I like how nonchalantly, kind of like the, uh, <laughs> the, 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 the clerk at an after hours 7 Eleven <laughs> will put it. It's been a busy night for all of us. <laughs> Girl, oh, I work hard for this position. <laughs> 
Although I do have to say, when Luna is showing off the the doors and she says, "Oh, let's just look into their dreams." Privacy? What's that? <laughs> Oh, that's a good point. I didn't think of that. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, I've, uh, it's always been sort of a thing. Mental privacy in Equestria is not a thing. No, it's not. This is, ever since Cadence zapped those two ponies with a love spell, I thought, wow. It, Equestria just operates under this different rule that nothing is sacred or personal. Not even your own mind. Now, I gotta be honest, I'm a very private guy. I do not want people changing my thoughts willy nilly or taking peek into this vast cranium. I just use emotional constipation in a podcast. I got <laughs> issues, people. You, 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 you say that when you have the modulator 3000 patent pending. <laughs> well, you see, I'm a horrible person. <laughs> We've established this. I am not a role model. <laughs> You are not going to make me say Tommy Wiseau is the best actor of all time. <laughs> oh. I, I for one, say, you're welcome into my head if you can survive. Oh, God. Uh, but no, that is absolutely true. Is that, that seems to be a running theme with this show. We need to find a reforming spell for Discord. Oh, I am an expert of doing making other ponies happy with each other by brainwashing their minds. <laughs> oh, your brother is under my full command. Ah, evil, evil! It's okay when we do it, but when they do it, it's evil! <laughs> That's a really good point. <laughs> <laughs> Hypothesis oh, yeah. match. Oh, yeah. Just... He... What? Oh, no. <laughs> Caden ain't my princess. I'm just saying that. <laughs> there's, there's a reason I, I make fun of Cadence and Shining Armor a lot, and that's all I'll say. But just like, no, no. I, I, I like Shining Armor, but that's because I like to put things in his butt, so it doesn't matter. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't uh, go to my rule 34. You, you and Caden share something in common there. <laughs> um, oh. I for one quite like Cadence as uh, she has a fantastic singing voice and I picture her as a teenager. Don't know why. <laughs> but we're getting away from the episode. And, um, I I'm think... the next one of the We Hate Cadence show. <laughs> yeah. I am the only one who doesn't hate Cadence. <laughs> I, like, I like Cadence. She's one of my favourites. Uh, anyway. So Luna opens up the door to the Kitty Marcus Haders clubhouse in, uh, in, at the end of the hallway. And there they are, suitable and scootaloo. And Luna is all like, we call this share dreaming. <laughs> it's strictly speaking legal. <laughs> but, uh, it is, okay, hang on a minute guys, because let's appreciate this little moment for all that is. Scootaloo loves to fly in her dreams. She can fly. Actually, there's one moment before then that I just want to draw attention to, and I'm going to ruin this episode for you guys as well. Oh, oh do it. Do it. I do. When Princess Luna comes in, and uh, Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo, who have ample reason to be happy to see her, you know, they wave, wave their arms in salute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Zikhail, Princess of Night. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> 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 Okay, are we all meeting the dreams and overthrowing Clash? Yeah, yeah. Has yeah. uh, the time for the glorious revolution come? <laughs> oh, you lunar la public as you will be. Yeah. Uh, we shall eliminate the crystal ponies, yeah. So, wait a minute, instead of calling it the third Reich, should it be the third solstice? <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> uh, so, yes. Did I mention I have issues? <laughs> you you kind of did a couple of times, but we don't have a problem I, with that. Yeah, I, I can't stress this enough. So I am not a role model. <laughs> I the children to be my beautiful volleys. Yeah. <laughs> we should open the door, Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, my God. Okay, but no, they, they, well, they reached the crying. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't matter what they, uh, what they get. Uh, when they get their cutie marks, and they shouldn't worry about that. So, with that, the dream ends. Apple Bloom finally wakes up. They use a different sound clip for the rooster call. If you notice, it's not the same that it was sounding in the dreams. It's a completely different one. Go check it out. It's actually a very neat touch, signifying that she's finally back in reality. She wakes up, has more pancakes, who is the, become the new protagonist of the show <laughs> this season, apparently. Pancakes. Is it, so many pancakes. There are so many pancakes in this in this uh, series now. That's what uh, Scootaloo was using that butter for. They are not. <laughs> so many pancakes. 
I will be. I will not be surprised when if Discovery Family puts an, an advert for pancakes because it'll be like, aha, they were building up to this uh, uh, commercial. Yes. I knew it. They, they were dealing with Denny's. You know that uh, breakfast set they have pancakes yeah, that, with that, toast that, No, that doesn't and... have pancakes. That doesn't have pancakes. Well, it's banana. It's banana bread with bacon and eggs. It's not pancakes. I really want pancakes now. I really, really, really want pancakes. Just, I'm hungry now. I just got lunch and I'm hungry. I'm, th- I'm hungry now too. Th- thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. My figure is gonna be ruined. Oh come on! For the little... everything I work for is ruined. For, for the for the little that you fly, I'm pretty sure you will not notice that. <laughs> oh. Oh. The shots were fired. Uh. <laughs> that is it. You, you dare mark the purity of the hippogriff race, which is technically a hybrid. <laughs> purity of the heart bleed, yeah. Oh, gosh. Ah. But um, moving away from the pancakes, my I think the, possibly the favourite part of this episode, as is with many other episodes, is the lullaby that she sings in the beginning and here at the end. It is... Beautiful, I think. And uh, I now want to hear it in a German accent. <laughs> no. But, um, I, I think my just... Fraulein, it's time to go to bed and dream of the master race where everyone else is dead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Yeah. Only on the MBS show you can hear this. Oh, nah. I am wrong on 50 levels. That was, <laughs> no, that was so right. That was just... Perfect. I'm oh. sorry if I've offended anyone by saying that, but that was fantastic. Well, I'm going to hell, so there you go. Oh. All the glory to the Griffin race. Oh, God. All right. All right, but uh, if I could actually get semi serious for a minute. Mm-hmm. Okay. The big one, one carried over criticism from both this episode and the comics is Luna's gotten a little more boring. That that in this episode she was not she wasn't her Luna eclipsed self basically which is how she was sort of reintroduced to the fandom and the question is have we lost the Luna that everyone sort of fell in love with or Mm. a majority of fans fell Uh, in love with um what's so bad about it like do we still want to have the the silly thou, thee, thou, us, us, we, we, shout in royal counterlord boys. Or do we want a Luna that is more close, that is more approachable, yeah. a bit more uh, respectable? Like the, the, She's so dignified in this episode. And in any other episode where, where she visited the CMCs in her, uh, in her nightmares uh, to, to lecture them, to save them, and to educate them, that do we want to go back to... Angry, shouty horse, or shall we keep going with the um, somewhat respectable, regal uh, princess, uh, princess horse of the night? Honestly, for me, I would like to see a more fun Luna. I mean, I don't mind the serious tone that we have now. I- I'm going to put the comic separate because the comic is dependent on who's writing. But for the show, I want I want to see a fun Luna. I mean. Um, her regal self like this, but more interacting with the, her surroundings than what we have here. I mean, in most of the episode that Luna appears in, she's like the Deus Ex Machina for every episode right now. Deus Ex Machina? What? Do you You're know the, that she's the problem? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know the concept of a Deus Ex Machina? Usually, the Deus Ex Machina doesn't really add up with the rest of the episode. It kind of like gets thrown in there. Luna well, makes sense to walk in the dreams. I mean, we have seen her being a dream walker. Yeah, yeah, Silver? Uh, just that uh, Deus Ex is usually... Luna is the solution, usually, but it's not, here's, I'll fix this for you, but she kind of gets the kids to wake up and, real, ironically, wake up and understand their problem. So I don't, I don't view her as Deus Ex, but she, she does appear a lot for just a brief amount of time. And is more of the nurturing mentor than she has been in the past. Which brings me to my point of, I actually really like this Luna because I'd like to point out that she's technically on the clock at this point <laughs> and she's being very professional and she's helping her subjects. Mm-hmm. However, I picture her as, do you know at the end of uh, Lunar Eclipse when she's mon- booed someone out of the 
uh, bobbing apples. She's just munching an apple. That's how I picture her when she's off the clock. Like she's just, I bet she's lying around the castle, like, ah, work, no work today, wonderful. Oh, just chewing on an apple. It's up to you. How are you doing? Rather than all oh, regal. But right now she's working the dreams of her subjects, and I feel like yeah. she has to have a certain air about her, like Work, regal. Wor- working, working the working the dreams, but also comforting them. Do you remember in the in the well? Okay, shall we? Uh, well, we just reached the conclusion of the episode. We are discussing this, but do you remember in the in the Sleepless in Ponyville episode when she appears in Scootaloo's dream? Yes. And when she saps the headless horse with uh, with her mic and appears, she is smiling to Scootaloo. She comes as a comforting uh, agent to make Scootaloo feel better. Because the nightmare is overwhelming her, overwhelming her. Same goes with uh, this episode with Apple Bloom. She appears and she's she she has a very pleasant, very pleasing uh, expression. She wasn't so pleased with Sweet Evil, however. She looked very severe and and quite crossed uh, because she knew that Sweet Evil had done something wrong and needed lecturing. But th- that's the thing is that I like this Luna a lot better. To me, she hasn't become boring. She's become actually more interesting. Although I can see why some people may consider her boring, because, you know... Celestia 2.0. Well, yeah, I can kind of see that. Though you have to under... I think you did bring this up, Silver, in one of your reviews, that Luna is a lot more personal when dealing with conflict. Like, Celestia throws Twilight in there saying, okay, you figure this one out. <laughs> uh, Twilight is a bit more like she's trying to get the hold of it. Cadence will brainwash you in order to accept her ways. Uh, but yeah. Luna is the only one that actually gets down and says, okay, uh, this is your subconscious. We are going to, we are going to work this out. I'm going to go back into your childhood. I am going to destroy this nightmare and explain to you why you are having this. I like her. I like that aspect of her. I think she's more interesting. Luna, the first psychiatrist in the question. <laughs> The, the ultimate, the ultimate psychiatrist. Don't tell me about your dreams. I checked them out just last night. You are sick. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do what? <laughs> Get out of here. I mean, put in that where? Oh my god. <laughs> and why was I in the dream? <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Oh, I God. actually really fear Luna coming into my dreams now. I'm going to go and get one of those, like, tin hats. <laughs> there was so much with dream. <laughs> um, yes. No. Yes. What? How did, what? I, I, this, this interview is over. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, let's do let's do final thoughts. Let's see what we think of of uh, this episode. Give it a wrap and and give our final conclusions. Sorry for a minute there. I thought he said give it a rub. Oh my. Oh <laughs> yeah. As well. We're going to. Uh, no, so, uh, well, a fun, a fun time with some great insight for the Crusaders and really impressive dream sequences. Like I say, I, I, I do hope some of the elements we saw are actually in the show. It's not beyond the realm that of the possible that maybe some of these actually do take place in the real world and the Crusaders are just projecting. Uh, I, I do like that Luna sort of has completed her bingo card of helping the Crusaders. Now it's a question of how can she help others? Double quote. Also, uh, double quote. Also, no. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I was going to say uh, Silver Spoon and Diamond Tiara, but I said Silver Quill. What? <laughs> uh, yeah, I was about to say you, were say, you were saying no to me. No. <laughs> you say no to me. How dare, no, I meant to how say Silver you? Spoon, but it came out Silver Quill. I'm sorry. Oh my god, that is even more insulting. Silver, attack. Uh, <laughs> I am now angry at shooting at the sky. Silver oh. use rage. It's super effective. <laughs> you don't need. You don't need to shoot. You have talents. You can. You can rip him apart. Actually, right now I just have a bunch of holes in my ceiling. <laughs> oh, great. great. Be careful. You don't want it to collapse on top of you. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Go so ahead. now that I now that I've been associated with one of the worst ponies, <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but, but then again, what I've what I've said about the German people today, I probably deserve. It. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay, Silver. You're American. You're excused. <laughs> we are not responsible for whatever Silver says. Neither am I. <laughs> 
Because I'm American, which probably means I'm horrible. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's perfect. No, that means you're responsibil responsibility-free. Yes. <laughs> uh... With me and this episode, I like it a lot. I mean, it does bring up an interesting question about dreams and getting worried and sleeping. I guess you don't need to be worried all the time and everything will come in its own time. Anyone? Yeah, well, it is King's turn. Uh, no, I wanted Silver Quill to finish what you're saying before, um, before oh. I accidentally called him Silver Spoon. Oh, no, I, I, I'd, I'd voiced my thoughts. I'm all good. You sure? Well, I'm really sorry. Good. I didn't mean to call you Silver Quill. Uh, Silver. <laughs> oh. Okay. I, 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 no, it's okay. I am going to give Silver your address so he can go and beat you up personally. <laughs> beat me off personally? <laughs> beat you up? Oh, my God. Oh, okay. I heard beat off. I was like, what? You <laughs> are... You have a problem, kid. We know this. This you is why he fits in here. Yes. I fit in. Yeah, popular. Mom, look at me. I'm talking to these people. Um, my okay. <laughs> Jokes aside, I'm still getting over that German song you came up with. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still trying not to cry laughing from that. Uh, my opinion on this episode is more informed, but I still love it regardless. <laughs> Luna, cutie mark shaders with cutie marks. I, it was just a win-win for me. Big Mac speaking, that's a big plus. Mm -hmm. To me, good episode. What do you think, James? This is uh, the third part of what I like to call the Dream Trilogy, with the CMCs both having nightmares and Princess Luna assisting them on them. Uh, it has Luna in it. It has a b brilliant insight of uh, what f what the, the fears that go through people's minds, because the future is something that is very scary, but at the same time, it's very exhilarating. Although if you're freaking out about it, of course, you're going to be afraid of it. And that's what happens. I thought this was very clever, very visually engaging. It's one of those episodes that you can pause for a minute and just soak in on all of the details that they put there. Like we didn't even talk about the different breakfasts that Applejack sets and, and, and all of the different animation nuggets that they put in there to indicate you that something's off, that this is a dream because things don't work normal. Mm -hmm. So I liked it. I really liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, I will go as far as saying that this is the best of the three episodes uh, featuring Princess Luna and one of the CMCs. Uh, because it was, and it, it did keep me uh, hooked the whole time. Like, I seriously didn't figure... I Because I approached this show with a lot of innocence and I don't like to overthink, I don't like to overthink it uh, a lot until I, I finish watching it. I seriously thought that she was under a spell until Princess Luna came out and said that she was doing this to herself because of her fears. And I'm like, that is so smart. So yeah, really liked it. I definitely watched this episode again. Got a question for you all. When was the point where you thought that, or when you knew this was a dream? Well, like I say, I got spoiled, so I'm probably a bad authority. Mm. Um, who spoiled you? We will fight them. Uh, Hasbro when they listed the episode summary on Zap to it. Uh, but really? You? Oh, when when? Oh, it's turning into a nightmare. Oh, well, actually, um, uh, what, what was it? Let me see if I can find the direct quote. Because I, I I did see that synopsis and I didn't take it so literally. I was like, well, my life is also a nightmare <laughs> and I'm awake all the time. Welcome to it. <laughs> Well, that's that's depressing. <laughs> while, while Quill yeah. finds the thing he's looking for. You, um, can, you cannot even imagine... Well, I'm pretty sure you can imagine how preoccupied I am right now with something that's supposed to happen this next Tuesday or Wednesday. <laughs> but my bank is just trying to screw me over, so I'm actually very concerned about that. So, yeah, I am living in a nightmare. Please get me out of here. Uh, while Silverquill's um, finding that fact out that he's looking for, um, when I figured this was a dream... Like I said, because I I heard that you can't see your reflection. I thought I I thought the first bit was real, and then she woke up. I thought, oh, that was that was a dream. This bit's real, and then her friends got very nasty, and I thought, oh, okay, well, that must be a dream. And then she woke up. I was like, oh, this is still a dream. And then she looked at the reflection. I went, oh no, it's not a dream anymore. <laughs> you tricked me. How could you? And then I saw Luna, and I was like, ah. You know, you just brought up something that I that I oversaw uh, when I when I was talking about the episode, when Apple Bloom is having the second dream and and her friends are being nasty to her. I like the fact that, that because that's something that really scared me because it will be something really um 
it would be bullcrap if the show pulls it off. It's like, oh, one of the CMCs get a cutie mark. That means that the rest of the CMCs are going to uh, ditch her and ignore her, and like they're not going to like her anymore because, ah, envy, jealousy, and plot number 137 of every <laughs> high school ever. <laughs> it's like, oh, a special friend had something. This is something that got tackled in season two. If you remember in the cutie pox episode when Apple Bloom gets two cutie marks, and Apple Bloom uh, uh, and uh, Scootaloo and Sweetable are like, our friend is the most special pony ever. And I'm like, that is so nice that they are yeah. going to keep supporting her friend, th- their friend, even after she got something that they both didn't get. And I'm and like, that two is of them as well. <laughs> I, I, but, but I was very, I was very happy with that. And like, those three are together. I don't know if um, I don't know if you guys have an expression of it in Span- in English, but in Spanish we have an, an expression to it. It's like uh, uh, like a piña. Like uh, and yeah, and which means that in a, in, in a piña, in a in a um, in a pine cone, piña is pine cone in Spanish. Uh, all of the seeds of the pine cone, they are together, tied, and then that's that that's how we see it. It's like when a group of people are together and they they work together for something. We say they are like a, like a piña, and that's what the that's what the CMCs are. Like they will stay together even when one of them. Gets or doesn't get their cutie mark. Uh, okay, we call that an open relationship. But okay. um, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, I l- no, I, like I get that. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. But I, I believe that this kind of covers off. Like a lot of people in the past, I've heard say, "Oh, they can never get their cutie mark. They can never ever get it." And I'm like, "Why?" Because, um, if anything, um, this because, because, because of this, they'll, they'll be angry with each other. Well, this episode covers that off. What's your other excuse? Uh, I don't like them with cutie marks. <laughs> so. My fanfic will be ruined. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what is this? There is something wrong with the house. I don't like change. <laughs> Brony fandom in a nutshell. <laughs> um, you, the cutie marks are seen, are seem to be the, the 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 subject of the season. They seem to be the theme of the season. If there is one season where the same are going to get their cutie marks, it's going to be this one. Yeah, probably. I actually look forward to them getting the cutie marks. Do you know why? Why? What happens after? Mm. Mm-hmm. I yeah. look forward to that. Yeah, the, let's see, find a job, find something to do. What happens now? I like yes. that. Series cancelled. My little pony. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it's just, it's just a soprano. I got my kitty mark. Turns the camera, fades to black. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end. Oh, boy. Oh, God. No, no, it's like, get the kitty mark. Next scene, unemployment office. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Apple Bloom, we don't have positions in the farm for you. You have that, to look for a job deep. somewhere else. That digs deep. Uh, uh, I'm speaking from experience. And so am I. Silver, did you find that? Yes, I did. Okay, okay share okay, it. Okay. Please share it with the class. Apple Bloom's anxiety about getting her cutie mark turned her life into a nightmare from which you may never escape. So it doesn't say that she's... Uh, She's trapped in an actual dream, but somehow just saying the word nightmare invokes a dream sequence with Princess Luna. Hmm. So a lot a lot of people were speculating, oh, is Luna going to be at this house? Oh, my God, it's Luna! Luna, Luna, Luna! <laughs> Best oh. princess ever! <laughs> it is. Uh, no. No, just, oh, shut up, Kane. You're wrong. Uh, <laughs> no, but you, you know that synopsis is a lot better than the synopsis for whom the suitable toils. Uh, that one is like a uh, suitable is envious of rarity, ruins her dress, and then Luna comes to visit her in a dream. I'm like, okay, all the mystery, all the mystery gone. I will never be surprised about this episode resolution. <laughs> I was surprised about this episode resolution, though. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I was surprised about the way they went about it. I'm just impressed that Luna managed to make the first Google Hangout in Equestria. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Oh, of course. Yeah. And then, and then the poor dear is uh, stuck with like 50,000 friend requests. Oh, God, no. But, yeah. I just love this episode's tell for this is a dream. Everything you're looking at now is a dream. Like from the rooster laying an egg to the fish being in the punch bowl... And to, well, the most obvious one, um, Apple Bloom's cutie mark changing each time she moves her flank. I was about to say, what about Pinkie Pie floating by in a chicken suit? Realized we're talking about Pinkie Pie, so that doesn't really count. <laughs> True. Yeah, that's, that, that's just sort of par for the course. Mm, I think yeah. Ponyville's grown now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's just Pinkie Pie. Well, that's it, right? We don't have anything else to share, anything else to um to mention? Are we forgetting um, anything? 
I don't think so. I, I mentioned everything still, I need to mention. Yeah, still loving the absolutely amazing animation improvement, not just with the eyes, but with the way Luna appears, moves her wings, he- he- leans her head back to control the moon. Uh, oh, but... No, Kin, don't you know... The show has gotten so stiff and unnatural for season know. one. If I ever find, like, the way, I mean, Christ, look at how like, Apple Bloom jumps around in an animation sequence, like an action sequence. That's really cool. And I don't care what people say, it's getting better. Of course it is getting better. Anyone who doesn't see that must be blind. I'm starting to find the person that told you that and slapped them. Oh, they didn't tell me. They posted it on Twitter. I will have to find a tweet for you. <laughs> oh, you're well, gonna, well. you're going you're gonna to have a laugh with it. That guy is a riot. <laughs> anyway. Crazy. Yeah, I will tell who it is after the after we are done with the recording. Mm-hmm. And we can I'm pretty sure we can rant about that guy long and long and enough. But for now let's end with today's episode. And mm-hmm. we're going to uh we're gonna see you guys next week where we will review in uh a comic. Since we are swapping between comics uh, comic issues and episodes of the actual show, we will be reviewing comic number twelve of the Friends Forever series, which is Twilight Sparkle and Pinkie Pie. Written by Barbara Randall Castle with art by Brenda Hickey and the colors by Awesome Heather Breckel. But that will be another tale for another time. Thank you guys so much for listening to us. Hope you didn't fall asleep. And if you did, may Princess Luna visit you in a dream. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. This has been James Cork. And I am Norman Sanzo. Zig Luna! <laughs> oh, God! <laughs> <laughs> How did you follow that? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just trying not to say it. I'm dry. <laughs> oh, still laughing for that song. I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh. That's not a word. Stay cool, you've broken me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is all going to be in. Oh, that's going to be my ringtone. You are aware of that, right? <laughs> oh, okay. <sighs> One. <laughs> so what are you saying? One, two, three. See you guys next week. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Oh. Bye. Oh. I has been the Kick Ass King, and this has been the MBS Show. Goodbye. Oh. I don't know how to move on from this. Oh.